All right, I was gonna make this video like a formal video explaining all the different types of hydroponic systems, benefits and drawbacks of each one, um, like the whole history of hydroponics, but I'm just gonna give you a brief overview of what it is and then show you what I personally use for my setup. So uh, hydroponics is basically growing plants without soil. So you're using an artificial grow medium uh, like for me in particular, I use rock wool cubes to start out um, the seedlings and then I use expanded clay pebbles known as hydrogen for the um, main grow medium for the roots to grow into and uh, establish like a root system. So uh, roots need water, nutrients and access to oxygen to grow. No matter how you grow them, those are the things that roots need in order to successfully provide the plant with what they need. So done correctly, hydroponics can produce larger and even more flowers in less time, even up to three quarters of the time that it would take a soil plant to reach the same results. So um, some grow mediums uh, like hydrogen um, are reusable as well. So that's another benefit for growing hydroponically. So once I'm done with a grow and I've harvested the plant, all I need to do is uh, let the roots dry out a little bit and then shake out the clay pebbles and I can reuse that. Um, and I, you can reuse soil if you're growing uh, soil plants, but that takes composting and more time. Everything about hydroponics is just quicker and um, produces larger plants. Another thing that I've found in uh, my experience growing both with soil and hydroponically is that when you use artificial or soilless grow mediums, you tend to have less pests in your garden, like flies, aphids, and the like. So um, I'm going to uh, briefly show you the system that I use, which is um, called a multi-flow or ebb and flow hydroponic system. So twice a day, I have buckets of expanded clay pebbles that flood and sit in that flood for 30 minutes. And in that flood, we have nutrients and water at the right pH um, so that the nutrients have direct access to the roots and that way the uh, potential growth is maximized. Um, and when it drains, that's when your uh, roots have access to oxygen. So. The ebb and flow system is a really effective way to grow hydroponically. So as you can see, everything in my tent is pretty much automated, aside from my soil plants. So um, the watering of the hydroponics, the fans, the aeration, even the lights are all on a 
electrical timers, essentially. Um, but when I was first starting out growing hydroponically back in 2016, I made my own DIY level controller tank, which, is, which was like the blue um, tank that I have right now. And there were some drawbacks because this system that I purchased as an all-in-one inclusive system has some features that are generally or that someone would easily overlook if they were trying to make their own system, which I'll get into right now. So here are some of the most important features that this manufactured level controller tank has that my DIY system did not. First off was the anti-siphon feature. So siphoning happens when there is a flow of water that goes from one container to another without the help of a pump. And what that uh, does sometimes is it overflows your level controller tank, even though your float switches turn off your flood pump, because of that siphon, it'll just keep on flowing and overflow everything. So um, that uh, anti-siphon feature is really important. Second of all, it came with two pumps that are specifically designed for hydroponic systems. So they are bottom draw pumps, which means that they don't need several inches of wa water to continue to operate. They can operate in very low levels of water. And that is good for a hydroponic system because you don't have standing pools of water, which could cause uh, growth of mold, algae, other things that you don't want. Um, Similarly, it includes black tubing for the same reason. When you have light and you have water, you have the potential to grow algae, which is not something you want when you are growing in your hydroponic system. So the black tubing doesn't allow light to go into that uh, nutrient-filled water while it's in the grow tent, so it prevents that algae growth. And there are several other features that are a little more subtle but still very nice and i will show you those right now so these are the grow buckets that are in the tent all right so we have this inner bucket which has holes in the bottom this is what holds your expanded clay pebbles or your hydrogen and that is what your root system is going to grow into and then This is the flood bucket, so that is what your nested bucket sits into. All right? And then the tube from the level controller tank is going to be connected to this three quarter inch fitting that included a uh, rubber grommet that was pre-assembled. So what's special about these is, as you may have noticed, they're stackable. They fit very nicely in one way or the other. So when you have a DIY system, this is just gonna be a straight bucket. So when you have that rubber uh, grommet or gasket, it makes it difficult to stack into another bucket because that gets in the way. But since this had that in mind, it was designed so that it was inset so that the rubber doesn't get in the way of the lip and it just slides in nicely. So it can go in that way or it can go in that way. It doesn't matter what is on the bottom, what is on the top. They can all stack nicely together, which is very convenient for storage. Right? And then <clears throat> another great thing about these buckets that is overlooked in a uh, DIY system or are hard to replicate in a DIY system is this bottom. So it may be hard to see, but this is hollow down here. So the bottom of the bucket actually starts from here up. But there's a little notch that goes down and that's where the tube is connected to. So what happens is when it drains, all the water goes out of the bottom of the bucket into that little notch and out through the tubing. And like I said before, that prevents that uh, standing water problem. And uh, that is going to prevent... Um, mold growth, algae growth. You don't want standing water uh, to be under your plants um, receiving light. So these are some of the benefits when you purchase a system that was specifically designed for hydroponics. 
I might go into more depth of uh, all the elements that make a good growing environment in the future, but just to give you the highlights, um, the temperature of the grow tent should be around room temperature. So around 75 degrees Fahrenheit would be optimal. Um, you don't wanna go above, you know, like 85 degrees into that hotter range. It kind of uh, affects the growth. <clears throat> In terms of humidity, uh, you want to aim between 40% and 80% relative humidity with 60% being optimal. Although my grow tent is often a lot lower than that and it still grows fine, but plants do tend to grow a little bit better in that higher relative humidity range. I use general hydroponics um, nutrients for my uh, grow. And cannabis is a uh, fairly gentle plant. So to avoid nutrient burn, you're gonna want to use just 50% strength of what's recommended on the bottle. <clears throat> and the way you want to add those to water is you want to do the flora micro first, followed by either the flora grow and the flora bloom. It doesn't matter after that. So, um, yeah, that is it. And um, I'm recording this portion right here right now on 420. And my channel is called Beyond the Garden 420 for obvious reasons to some, not so obvious to others. But if you've made it this far in the video, I sincerely appreciate it. I really am genuinely grateful for everyone who views my videos. Every time I see a new view, I'm just happy. I don't really intend to make it big. This is kind of like an amateur niche channel. So I am uh, grateful for every view I get.